Jordan Liddell, the classic California girl, spending days on the sands in Malibu and nights dreaming of what could be. And like many young, blonde beach beauties living near Hollywood, sometimes dreams really do come true. Jordan is just 13 years old when she's approached and offered acting lessons by a who's who in Hollywood circles. His name is Cameron Thor, an actor in the mega blockbuster hit Jurassic Park. And acting coach to the celebrity elite. He boasts his clientele includes Cameron Diaz, Courtney Cox, and Madonna. The sweet, shy, innocent Jordan is excited and grateful for the opportunity. Your first impression of him was what? I, I thought he was the most amazing person in the world. I looked up to him like a dad, because at that time, parents were having issues. We weren't all getting along the best, and me and my dad didn't have the best relationship back then, so I, he kind of took that role. A father figure, acting coach, but Cameron Thor had a different role in mind. What happened the first time? He just put his hands on my leg, on my thigh. He rested his hand on my thigh and sat next to me, but I'd never done an acting lesson, so I just assumed that's how it went. Jordan is a naive kid. The unsupervised lessons continue. She's 13, he's 49. Cameron Thor has an eye for talent and young girls. He locked the door, which was weird. And I was like, that's not right. At the end, my mom was calling, and I was standing here, and the door was behind him, and he wouldn't let me leave. And he kept saying, your mom can't see me like this, your mom can't see me like this. And then he hugged me, pressed his penis up against me, and said, you make me I I can't have your mom see me like this. That's not something I get told on the regular at 13. So I was like, what? Like, what do you mean? And then I was like, I have to go. And finally, he let me go. Jordan is scared. She doesn't know what to do. Remember, this is a man she trusted. I was 13, like I couldn't even defend myself. I didn't know, how was I supposed to know that someone doing that to me was trying to hurt me, or someone who cared about me and said they loved me and was a dad to me would hurt me like that. I didn't know that. Not wanting to believe her beloved acting coach and surrogate father is a monster, Jordan agrees to another lesson. This time, Cameron Thor says he's taking her for a drive to Malibu. I knew the way to Malibu. I live here. I live over the canyon from the beach, and we did not go to the beach. He made a right turn, and I was like, whoa, whoa, where are you going? Like, this isn't the way to the beach. Cameron pulls over on the side of the canyon road. The only thing he'll be teaching today is a hard life lesson. Never even seen weed before. And he put the pipe up to my mouth and told me to smoke it, and I just started coughing. I didn't know what to do, so I just wasn't doing it right. So he smoked it, grabbed my face, grabbed me by the back of the hair, and pulled my head to him and started kissing me and blowing smoke into my mouth in the front seat. And then told me to get in the back. Once in the back seat, Jordan claims Cameron undresses and sexually assaults her. What did Cameron Thor do to you? He raped me. He took my life. He took me. He took my identity. He took my self-esteem. He took my self-worth. He took my virginity. He took control of anything that I could have had of control for myself. That's supposed to be special for someone. I didn't get that. I still have so little value in myself, and I try. I've been to therapy, and I've had help, and I try, but what, there must have been something wrong with me. Riddled with guilt, Jordan stays quiet about the incident, doesn't even tell her parents. Then the night terrors began. I'd wake up screaming with a nightmare every night and have my parents standing over me, telling me it's okay, it's okay, and me waking up sweaty, crying and freaking out and not knowing what's going on. It's during a trip to the dentist, the ugly truth is revealed when Jordan wakes up from anesthesia. She's curled up in a ball and she's screaming, like, Mommy, 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 he's gonna get me again, he's gonna get me again, Cameron's gonna get me. And I looked at her that day, right at that time, and I saw her face. Everything, all those things that she uses to cover everything up are gone. Going through marital problems at the time, Jordan's parents are devastated. They miss the signs. That's a tough one, yeah. you know? Um, I mean, again, I, I, I think, frankly, I, uh, I view that as, as my own failure. You know, clearly, 
there was a time when, when things weren't as good as they are now for our family structure. And perhaps I wasn't the representative father that I should have been for, for Jordan or, or, or I had failed her at some point. And, and that left that door open for her to desire a secondary father figure. And, you know, for that, I can't, you know, I can't ever forgive myself. With her family back together now supporting her, Jordan is able to break her silence and go straight to the Los Angeles County Sheriff. She told us that she went to Cameron Thor's residence for an acting lesson. And after the acting lesson, he drove her to a secluded area in the Gora Hills and he sexually assaulted her. You can clearly hear the pain still in Jordan's voice as she describes the attack to detectives. How did you spend your time that evening? Do you remember? I fought in my room. Okay. And what were your thoughts? No, nothing. Mm -hmm. She just, I'm just sad. Felt sad. And did you write anything, text anybody? This is an actual recording of Cameron talking to Jordan, who's choking back tears and anger. I've always had this mad desire to you. Now 18. After five years of living with the terror of the attack, Jordan Liddell is ready to take this monster down. Well, I thought it was my fault. It ruined me. It destroyed me. It's, it, that part of me is dead. I can never get that back. She is determined to keep it from happening to anyone else. Jordan agrees to go face to face with a man who stole her innocence for the very first time since that frightening encounter. Special Victims Bureau investigators instruct Jordan to make contact with Cameron via text. Hey Cameron, it's Jordan. I don't know if you'd remember me. Thor immediately writes back. I remember you kiddo. I would love to catch up. The sting is set. Jordan will meet Cameron at a coffee shop. She is justifiably terrified. That was one of the hardest things at the time that I'd had to do, having to go back and sit in a room with him. Who wants to go back and sit next to someone who took everything from you with their intent to want to do it again? Ever courageous, Jordan agrees to wear wire as she prepares to confront her attacker. Now investigators just need a confession. We were bad. <laughs> yeah, I realized, in fact, it's kind of why I stopped. I was like, wait a minute, I'm... I know, you just stopped talking to me. Well, because I didn't want to get you in trouble because I realized despite how mature you are and how different you are than the average person, you were also in the age where Deputies are listening, but the first thing is a bust. There's insufficient audio proof to make an arrest. Jordan claims Cameron whispered incriminating portions of their conversation on purpose. She is devastated. What did he whisper to you that only you could hear? You were only 13. That was bad. We were so bad. Can't believe I did that to you. All that stuff. He said it so quiet, pardon my language, but like he knew that he was being recorded. Two months later, investigators regroup. Still working undercover, Jordan places a cell phone call to Cameron. My mind is swamped with images. Oh, really? Oh, God, Jordan. Look at yourself. Well, what about me? You're beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. And you're young. I am young. I'm not that young, though. Very you're legal. Smart. Oh my god, the last time I was in your car, I was like, what, 13, 14? Yes. 13, oh my god. And I'm an adult now. We could have so much fun now. Can yeah. you imagine me stretched out? I'm sure you can imagine me stretched out. I can. Then, this bombshell. I've always had this mad desire to f you. You have? Yeah, which is a really direct way to put it. Well, we always could. I just want to twist you around like a little spider movie and watch you f mm. That is what I would like to do. 
Investigators have heard enough. The Special Victims Bureau rushes in for an arrest. Jordan is there with her father, hiding in their car, watching and recording every moment as the sheriff's deputies move in. Look at that creepy mother Is he in handcuffs? Oh my God, Jordan. Is yes. He? An emotional Jordan calls her mom from the car. Mama. Yeah. They got him. Hey, you. He's in the car, they're driving away. Police yeah. Hi. <laughs> <Hey. laughs> yeah, they got him. I was jumping around with my hands in the air, screaming, the biggest smile on my face. So happy we got him. It's done. I'm done. Now, LA Sheriff's detectives grill Thor in this audio interrogation. You're getting your actual lessons. Uh huh. Where she's alleging that during that time that you guys had sexual intercourse together. Oh, God, no. No. She's saying I had sex with her? Yes. yes. Well, not, not, I didn't kiss her or touch her or do anything sexual at all with Jordan. I did not do that. Cam Thor was arrested, and he was ultimately charged with 11 felony counts. Those counts included kidnapping with the, uh, for the purpose of rape, and also a lewd and lascivious act with a child under 14 years of age. Cameron Thor is convicted of one count of lewd act with a child with a special allegation of substantial sexual contact. All other charges were dropped. He is sentenced to six years in state prison. She's victorious. And it's two years, six years, 20 years, doesn't really matter. I mean, the legal system allowed for him to get a sentence of six years in her case. And I'm satisfied for the way this played out. That was a pretty good result. He's gone, you know? He's living wherever he's living in some prison cell where he belongs, and my focus is Jordan right now. Despite Thor's arrest and conviction, Jordan Liddell continues to receive counseling and hopes her courage will help others stand up and fight back. I hope and pray that I could be an inspiration for that little 13-year-old girl who is in my shoes also, that I'm able to turn something so horrific in my life that ruined my life, that made me want to die. It keeps me motivated. It keeps me going, knowing that maybe they'll be okay because I told my story.